Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, August 30th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service. Well, we have a lot of bases to cover in the tropics today. We'll start out here with Tropical Depression 8 off the outer banks of North Carolina. This has largely stalled its west-northwest movement and is no longer really moving toward the coast. And it looks like it's about to make that turn off to the northeast that was expected, and this will not be making landfall. In addition, most of the heavy thunderstorms and bad weather remain well offshore near the center of circulation, and really no adverse weather of significance has affected the outer banks as of yet, but a tropical storm warning does remain in effect tonight, and some of these low-level cloud bands to the northwest of the center uh, are capable of generating thunderstorms if instability arises, and uh, those isolated thunderstorms and showers could bring the potential for tropical storm force wind gusts and obviously torrential rain during the night, uh, but the system is about to start moving northeast away from land and will not be a threat for very long. Uh, over in the Central Pacific, we have a uh, much more serious situation developing with very strong Hurricane Madeline barreling westward on a beeline track toward the big island of Hawaii right now. And uh, the Hurricane Hunters earlier today found a pressure around 970 millibars with winds of up to 115 miles per hour in the eye wall of this small eye that you can kind of see here as a divot in the cloud field. Uh, not particularly well defined, uh, but the plane did find very strong winds here. So this remains a powerful hurricane, and as it comes west, it is getting sheared a little bit. You can see the cloud field slightly asymmetric with the left-hand side having slightly less clouds than the right-hand side. Uh, that's because of an upper-level trough to the north of Hawaii, which is inducing some southwesterly shear that will be increasing over the hurricane as it moves toward Hawaii, and so some weakening is expected. However, this is also expected to remain a hurricane as it approaches the island, and a hurricane of any strength is a somewhat unprecedented event for the Big Island, a landfall of any hurricane has not happened in recorded history and so this is this has the potential to cause some severe issues uh, for an island that doesn't usually see storms of this intensity this is likely to be worse than tropical storm Izel from 2014 a couple of years ago and in addition to the uh, torrential rains that always occur during the very high topography of the big island of Hawaii that volca those volcanic mountains uh, can really rack up the rainfall totals causing mudslides and the the potential for uh, flooding inland. Uh, there's also the potential for very damaging waves coming off the ocean, a little bit of surge, and uh, strong winds obviously along the coastal areas, and even the uh, high terrain inland as it is higher above the ground and can get some of that higher wind to come off the ocean a little bit farther inland than just the coast. And uh, right now the Central Pacific Hurricane Center takes the hurricane just south of the Big Island during the next couple of days, uh, but any shift north in the track uh, right now could bring this even closer to the Big Island, but even if the eye remains just offshore, as the official forecast states, uh, it could bring hurricane conditions to the island, and a hurricane warning is in effect for the entire Big Island of Hawaii, and a tropical storm watch is also in effect for the island of Maui, but conditions are not expected to be as bad there as it will be farther from the track. But a high surf may extend all the way uh, into the coast of these uh, other islands off to the west-northwest. Uh, so uh, very bad conditions obviously expected here. Uh, definitely pay attention to the warnings from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service Office in Honolulu uh, for this danger situation as the hurricane approaches. Uh, likely late in the day on Wednesday will be the time of closest approach of the eye, uh, but even if the eye uh, is offshore and does come in late in the day, uh, obviously tropical storm conditions uh, extend well out ahead of the eye and can arrive in the island uh, well before that, so even early in the day, perhaps even on Wednesday morning, conditions could begin deteriorating on the eastern edge of the island. Uh, so stay safe out there, anyone uh, in Hawaii uh, dealing with this storm. Moving back to the Atlantic now, we're uh, watching Tropical Depression 9 still in the southern Gulf of Mexico. This is the system that uh, is a concern for the northeast Gulf Coast as this will eventually begin moving toward the northeast and into this region. And uh, we noticed today a couple of things. One is that the center of circulation is not easy to find anymore to the eye. That's because it's obscured by some convection that has increased in coverage overall in the vicinity of the circulation. And note that uh, during the last few days, we had seen most of the convection to the southeast of the center. Uh, but as of today, we're seeing bursts to the northeast and the southwest of the center, which is nestled in between. Uh, this is telling us that uh, the environment is moistening a little bit in the northeast and southwest quadrants, as well as the southeast quadrant, and really the only side of the storm that remains incapable of generating strong, th strong thunderstorms is this northwestern quadrant, where uh, dry mid-level air continues to dominate the central Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but these other sides of the storm here 
are showing deeper convection over a larger area today and as the intense heating is released from these thunderstorms it increases the chances of this mid-level low which is still down here spinning away uh, it, it increases the chances of that reforming to the north closer to where the low level center is and we've been talking about this for the, the duration of this storm's life but uh, it has remained decoupled and as soon as these finally stack together in the same place uh, that can allow more uh, intensification to occur so far the storm has not really strengthened since entering the gulf but as soon as the mid-level and low level center stack it allows the pressure to lower and uh, the winds to increase and so this may become a tropical storm and begin strengthening tomorrow if this convective organization can continue to improve and uh, make this more of a stacked system in the vertical we do continue to have some southwesterly wind shear. you can see these cirrus clouds streaming from southwest to northeast on your screen uh, but it is a little bit lighter than it has been over the last couple of days and uh, this is uh, helping to allow this convection spread over a larger area so we'll continue to see that continue as it fights the shear uh, but it's a little bit easier to do so than it has been over the last couple of days here's the recon flight uh, from uh, just recently uh, as of the making of this video uh, showing the passes through the center and uh, really a pretty broad and weak wind field continues so nothing over tropical storm force here found by the plane and uh, pressures uh, remain uh, not all that impressive here but you can see the locations in orange showing a slow drift to the west southwest while the plane is in here it has not made its turn toward the northeast yet uh, and you can see that the latest location here is nestled in between these two areas of deep convection in the background just as we showed on satellite imagery before and again most of the convection used to be to the southeast during these flights so this is an improvement in the organization that will continue to keep an eye on here so here's the GFS forecast valid 2 p.m. tomorrow on Wednesday showing the low uh, down here kind of sandwiched between all of the dry air to its northwest and the deep convection moisture to its southeast and so the model continues to show this struggling a bit through tomorrow uh, as it deals with shear and this dry air and the fact that the flow is a little bit more elliptic rather than circular over the eastern gulf which makes it hard for the circulation to tighten uh, but as this continues to move northeast toward landfall we start to see it stack a little bit better with its mid-level center on the model and this low this red L moves deeper into the green area of this deep moisture indicating that the center moves underneath the deep convection in the model and we talked about how if that alignment occurs that's when strengthening can begin and in agreement with that this model here does show strengthening as soon as that alignment occurs and this is kind of the concern that we're watching for here over the next 48 hours is whether or not this does become vertically stacked and if so uh, strengthening will likely ensue and this is uh, again the first time we're seeing the GFS kind of come on board with this and we've also seen the European model show some strengthening again today where previously it was not showing that kind of strengthening and so we're getting a little bit more model agreement now uh, that this will be intensifying as it nears the coast and again we talked about yesterday how that may be possible due to the fact that when the storm is out over the Gulf we start developing a nice outflow channel out here to the northeast this first one kind of develops because of this upper level low that uh, we can see on water vapor imagery here currently over Georgia and South Carolina as this backs toward the west it allows a southwest flow in the upper levels to the north of this developing storm and that allows air to easily move away from the storm in the upper levels which is a healthy configuration because when air can leave quickly like this uh, through this fast upper flow it allows uh, rising air near the center of the storm due to the divergence that this causes and this can allow the storm to strengthen now this as this outflow channel develops again we're going to have an upper level trough come down out of the northeast which you can't see on your screen yet but by the time we get to landfall you can kind of see the base of the trough up here intensifying this jet streak over the mid-atlantic states in north carolina and so this outflow channel becomes even more intense and you get this nice healthy entrance region to the jet which again uh, really helps the storm as it's moving ashore even if there is some southwesterly shear that you can see here across the storm and the dry air on the back side but these negative impacts can be overcome sometimes when this jet uh, provides a healthy outflow channel of this type and uh, right now models seem to be coming to a little closer agreement uh, that this will allow some intensification of the storm despite those negative factors as it moves toward the Florida Gulf Coast so the official forecast uh, does continue to forecast strengthening uh, in that fashion and uh, this is uh, forecast to have winds of about 65 miles per hour when it moves into the Big Bend region of Florida uh, but some of the model agreement today has uh, made the forecast 
a little bit more concerning and a hurricane watch has been issued from Tampa uh, to Apalachicola indicating the potential for uh, this to achieve hurricane strength as it moves through the northeast gulf but regardless of whether or not it gets that strong the primary impacts from a system like this is usually going to be water related which means inland flooding and storm surge along the coast again we have a lot of strong wind on the southeast side of the storm pointing at the coast pushing water into the coastal regions of Florida into uh, areas from Tampa Bay northward and uh, that's reflected on the NHC outlook here for storm surge showing everything in yellow along the coast here indicating three feet or more above normal water water levels along the coast as the, the wind pushes uh, this water toward the coastal areas near and southeast of where the center makes landfall. So regardless of exactly where the center goes, this is a large section of coastline that will see surge. And of course, the surge will be stronger if the storm is stronger, but it's the water here that is usually the big problem, and Florida can be prone to flooding uh, from systems like this near and southeast of where the system makes landfall is where the heaviest rain is likely to be. Uh, but as we talked about yesterday, the stronger this is, especially if it does... Uh, uh, make strong tropical storm or hurricane strengthen here uh, will allow adverse conditions to wrap around the north side a little bit farther to the left of track here and so areas of the Florida panhandle may also receive uh, conditions due north of where the center makes landfall as well as to the south and east of the center and so this will have to be watched very closely as it moves through the northeast gulf and then even beyond as we see the storm rather close to the coastal areas of georgia and the carolinas after it moves beyond florida and uh, due to these strong dynamics that we've talked about aloft here with this strong jet streak uh, it will likely uh, start taking on some non-tropical characteristics as it moves off the coast, but regardless of that, may still retain hurricane force winds in this area, especially if it's over water. The combination of the tropical convection and the non-tropical dynamics associated with this jet may allow a hurricane force system to even continue strengthening on the other side of Florida here if it's over water. So this will have to be watched carefully for impacts to coastal southeast United States as well, even beyond Florida, and then on out into the Atlantic after that. Uh, so we'll have to watch that closely. Again, the primary impacts are usually due to flooding and storm surge with a system like this, but the winds are potentially going to be a problem too here with power outages likely uh, if this is approaching strong tropical storm or hurricane strength as it makes landfall and tornadoes are also a possibility with any tropical cyclone that's making landfall in Florida in this fashion usually on the front end of the system the storm prediction center currently has a marginal risk for tornado activity associated with the storm as it makes landfall so stay tuned to your local weather office uh, statements on the threats to your local area as this storm nears and uh, stay safe everybody all right that's it for today thanks for watching